It is a multi-user virtual reality projection system. So on this large screen that you see here, we display a 3D scene for up to six users. And <coughs> for each of them, we provide an individual perspective so that all um, so that all can perceive the shared space from their individual perspectives. So what you see here is filmed through a camera like yours with shutter glasses on and the camera is tracked as are the, uh, the three users that we see here interacting with this world. And since the camera is tracked as all the users, you can see, um, you can understand the pointing and tracing gestures of the users. And you also see some advanced uh, interaction techniques that we developed here using the metaphor of photography um, uh, to, to travel through virtual spaces and so on. So I'm not going into detail about that. This is really more about getting you an idea of how our system works. If you go to the 3D cinema, you get stereoscopic movies that are rendered with different views for your left and your right eye. Now the distance between your left and your right eye is 65 millimeters, which is not very much. While as when you move around this already seated, this is like about a meter. When you're walking around, this is way more. And if you consider that, more, that, that, uh, that many people are sitting next to you and the distance that you have to them, then you understand that the perspective differences in between these people, and particularly if they move, are far more important than the, than the difference between your two eyes in stereoscopy. For example, a bus model that's meant to be reviewed would look like this from the left side, from the front it would look like this, and from the right the guy would see a picture like that. If you don't have that, in a common VR system you would have tracking for one user only, as for the left one here, he's pointing to something on the, on, on the bus model, but you cannot perceive what it is and you perceive the model totally distorted as you're moving around the screen. This is what this video shows. So you see the perspective adapts to his movements. If instead both are provided with an individual perspective, then you totally understand, oh, okay, I'm walking around this 3D model and my colleague is pointing to the right indicator of this bus model. All of a sudden this makes a, a shared experience, so all of a sudden you can talk about these 3D models and discuss geometrical features. We have developed very high frequency projectors that run at 360 hertz and they show the images for the, for the different users one after another. So basically DLP projectors, blue, green and red, shown one after another. We have stacks of three projectors where we use the time slots to show images for the different users. And then we double this with another stack of projectors to get stereoscopy. This really allows you to understand pointing and tracing gestures of your fellow, uh, of your colleagues. This is a, um, a picture from a study that we have done. My colleague Andre Kunert to the left of this image was pointing at individual buildings that were predefined and our participants had to identify which building was meant. And if you look at this close, then you can really see that they understand each other, right? We were then thinking like, okay, if people travel a lot, we want to stay in contact. In best case, we want to maintain face-to-face -face contact. Here you see a snapshot of what we have achieved, where groups of people at different locations meet each other in a virtual environment. So these two people in the foreground are locally present, while these two people in the background do not look quite as good because they are 3D reconstructed. They are uh, captured in real time in 3D and reconstructed as what we call 3D video avatars with whom you can interact. So basically this is uh, captured with five Kinect from five different perspectives and then we take the video, the, uh, the video streams, the color video streams and the depth video streams and use it to create a reconstruction of a user. By the way, this is Stefan Beck, my colleague, who realized that. Is this uh, a bit like uh, Star Wars' uh, hologram? This is pretty much like this Star Wars hologram. The shield will be down here. I mean, the reconstruction is there, and then uh, we have the displays to show it, so immediately we have a situation which is like the holodeck in Star Trek or, the, um, or this uh, in, in Star Wars, these, uh, these holograms too. Again, we were interested in how pointing gestures work in this environment, 
and you can see it's a bit more difficult, right? Because the reconstruction of the hand is not quite as precise as you see in you know, my finger here, but we get um, decent results. So it's uh, it's not quite as good as uh, as real world interaction but it's kind of acceptable. Interesting feature that you get out of it when you work together in this shared virtual environment and you use, for example, a scaled down version of the world that you're, that you're navigating through, as you can see here, then you can, of course, find yourself reconstructed in this uh, 3D environment. You see again here people discussing details of this um, of this miniature representation of the environment that they are working in, the city church of Weimar, so-called Herderkirche. And when we zoom further in, we see all of us as miniatures represented in real time. Does that go on forever then? Uh, we could do this forever. <laughs> This computer file video is brought to you by the people at Harry's who make these great shaving products. I've used this this morning, which is why obviously I'm looking quite as uh, dapper as I am. They sell shaving products online. And if you've never heard of them, they're big believers in things being really good value for money. Um, a lot of shaving and uh, razors that you buy replacement blades for and things are tend to be quite overpriced. This is the razor. Still a bit of shaving foam on that is from this morning. You get some shaving foam in this package, some spare blades. What I really like as well is it's got this case to put the razor in when you're not using it. And I've got kids, um, I wouldn't like them to be hanging around uh, sharp razors. So thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Go and check out the website. And if you're interested in uh, diving in there, then use the coupon code COMPUTERFILE and that will really help us out as well as you guys. So thank you again to the people at Harry's for sponsoring this computer file video. Check them out.